सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट नेशनल करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क ट्वेंटी पार्ट ए अप्रोच चैप्टर टू पेज नंबर सिक्सटी टू चैप्टर नेम स्कूल स्टेज इज लॉजिक एंड डिजाइन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर आर्टिक्यूलेटेड द एम्स ऑफ स्कूल एजुकेशन फॉर दिस एन सी एफ एंड द कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग सेट ऑफ डिजायरेबल वैल्यूज डिस्पोजिशन कैपेसिटीज and knowledge required to achieve these aims the chapter also touched upon the curricular arrangements required to achieve these aims including the different curricular areas that are part of this ncf next is a figure 2i which is on page number 62 it explains the four stages of the curricula The first stage is the foundational stage which has play activity based learning it is for 5 years anganwadi preschool balwatika includes grades 1 and 2 it can be for children from age 3 to 8 next stage is the preparatory stage it shows play discovery and activity based learning it is for 3 years It is for children from grades three to five, aged between eight to eleven. Next is middle stage, which involves conceptual and experiential learning in the science, mathematics, arts, social sciences, and humanities. It is for three years from grades six to eight, the ages eleven to fourteen years. Next is secondary stage. which is multidisciplinary study flexibility and student choice of subjects this stage is for 4 years from grades 9 to 12th the age of the children should be 14 to 18 now we move on to page number 63 it says nep 2020 recommends that schooling will now be imagined in four stages in a new 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 design covering ages 3 to 18 which is based on the stages of physical cognitive and socio emotional ethical development of children or students the policy states the curricular and pedagogical structure and the curriculum framework for school education will therefore be guided by a 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 design consisting of the foundational stage in two parts that is 3 years of anganwadi or preschool plus 2 years in primary schools in grade 1 or 2 both together covering ages 3 to 8 preparatory stage grades 3 to 5 covering ages 8 to 11 next is middle stage grades 6 to 8 covering ages 11 to 14 and secondary stage grades 9 to 12 in two phases that is 9th and 10th in the first and 11th and 12th in the second covering ages 14 to 18 this is nep 2020 figure number 4.1 moving on thus the aims of education are to be achieved in a 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 structure in schools covering ages 3 to 18 this chapter outlines the logic of these four stages of schooling the specific considerations for curricular structure content pedagogy and assessments for each of these stages and their relevance for achieving the aims of school education the central logic of dividing schooling into the four stages is based on a current understanding of child human development and the increasing complexity of concepts and requirements of capacities in different curricular areas The first two sections of this chapter describes the process and stages of child development and development of complexity in concepts and requirements of capacities in the different curricular areas. The last section elaborates on the four stage design of this NCF. Next is section 2.1 which says about child development. Around the world the experiences of children growing up are different depending on various circumstances social cultural and economic but there are some common processes and stages in the maturation and growth of the child it is critically important to understand the development of a child to have appropriate educational expectations 
at a particular age. Understanding the trajectory of child development helps in developing a quality curriculum with developmentally appropriate pedagogy and assessment. Child development is influenced by the interplay of three different processes, namely biological processes, cognitive processes, and socio-emotional processes. These processes are intricately interwoven with each other. Each of these processes plays a role in the physical, cognitive, linguistic, socio-emotional and moral development of a child. These processes are explained in figure 2.1i on page number 64. The figure says and talks about the genetic and epigenetic factors and material conditions have an impact on a child's body such as height, weight and development of the brain. The figure shows three circles which are interwoven. One circle is a biological processes, next is cognitive processes and the third is socio-emotional processes. The cognitive processes speak about cognitive experiences and stimulation affect a child's thought processes, intelligence and use of language. Socio-emotional processes talks about the socio-emotional experiences and stimulation affect a child's relationships with adults and peers, emotional regulation and personality. Moving on, it says, a child's development is usually described in terms of periods corresponding to approximate age ranges. A. Infancy. This period ranges from birth to three years. A child in this period is highly dependent on adults. Children are beginning to learn about the things around them and to focus their vision and explore. B. Early Childhood. This period begins around age 3 and usually extends up to 6 to 7 years of age. Children begin to become more self-sufficient and spend more time with peers. This is also a period of intense exploration through play. C. Middle to late childhood. This developmental period is roughly from 8 years to 11 to 12 years of age before they hit puberty. During this period, children master the fundamental capacities and understanding for survival and growth. They grow physically, emotionally and cognitively through exposure to the wider world around them and their culture. D. Adolescence This period is the transition period from childhood to early adulthood. A child enters adolescence at approximately the age of 12. Adolescence begins with rapid physical changes, gains in height and weight, changes in body contour and development of secondary sex characteristics. At this stage, the development of identity and the quest for independence is the central theme in children. Next is page 65. 2.1.1 Development Across Domains 2.1.1.1 Physical Development Height and weight increase rapidly during infancy. By their first birthday, infants nearly triple their weight. As the child reaches early childhood, the percentage growth of height and weight decreases with each additional year. Growth patterns vary individually, while some variation is due to hereditary factors, certain environmental factors have significant influence as well, such as nutrition and stress. Middle and late childhood is the calm before the rapid growth spurt in adolescence. It involves slow and consistent growth in height and weight. There is improved muscle tone and the strength capacity also doubles during these years. Adolescents experience a growth surge during puberty. Puberty occurs approximately two years earlier for girls than boys. The features and proportions of the body change as the individual becomes capable of reproduction. 
Among the most important factors that influence the onset and sequence of puberty are heredity, hormones, weight and body fat. Next is sensory and motor development. Infants and children begin rolling, sitting, standing and develop other motor skills in a particular sequence and within specific time frames. Infants are also born with certain reflexes which are built in reactions to stimuli. Reflexes govern the newborn's movements which are automatic and beyond their control. Reflexes are genetically carried survival mechanisms. They allow infants to respond adaptively to their environment before they have had an opportunity to learn. They include sucking, rooting and moro reflexes. When the baby gets startled by an unexpected sound, light or movement, all of which typically disappear after 3 to 4 months. Some reflexes such as blinking and yawning persist throughout life. Components of other reflexes are incorporated into voluntary actions. Next is gross motor skills involve large muscle activities. Key skills developed during infancy include control of posture and walking. Mastering a motor skill requires the infant's active efforts to coordinate several components of the skill. Infants explore and select possible solutions through the demands. Infants explore and select possible solutions to the demands of a new task. They assemble adaptive patterns by modifying their current movement patterns. Gross motor skills improve dramatically during the childhood years. Boys usually outperform girls in gross motor skills involving large muscle activity. Next is fine motor skills involve finely tuned movements. The onset of reaching and grasping is a significant accomplishment. Fine motor skills continue to develop throughout the childhood years and by four years of age are much more precise. Children can use their hands as tools by middle childhood and start to show fine motor skills similar to those of adults at 10 to 12 years of age. Next we talk about 2.1.1.2 that is cognitive development. Children construct their own cognitive worlds, building mental structures to adapt to the world. They actively construct their meaning and understanding. The progression of cognitive development from infancy to adolescence can be seen as described below. Infancy The infant organizes and coordinates sensory experiences such as seeing and hearing with physical movements. They quickly learn and are able to understand that things they see continue to exist even though these things are no longer around them. They can scan patterns actively and display a growing capacity for remembering in ways that current neuroscience is still exploring. Next is page 66. Early Childhood The child's mental life is becoming more expansive with experiences. They have pictures in their minds about various things in the world. Their capacity for new vocabulary and making mental pictures allows for more learning about the world and other people. They begin to make sense of others, getting a sense of how people and things work. Their memories can hold much more than adults sometimes give them credit for. Next is Middle Childhood. By now, the child can think through reasons using language and ideas, understand well how people and things work around them and give order to these things in terms of value and size. Their capacity to remember and use what they remember to engage in activities grows in leaps and bounds. They even devise ways to remember better and are able to analyse problem solve and imagine alternatives. Third is adolescence. 
the adolescent individual thinks in diverse and complex ways with a growing capacity for working with ideas and logical analysis. This enables them to plan, solve problems and systematically test solutions. They are able to mentally look back at their own actions and evaluate, form a sense of themselves as different and similar to others and are able to engage with ideas of right and wrong. They can be focused and flexible in their thinking and make decisions with reasoning. Next is 2.1.1.3 Language Development The development of language is a significant aspect of a child's development. The trajectory of this development across the age ranges is described below. Infancy Among the milestones in infant language development are crying, birth, cooing, 1-2 to two months, babbling, 6 months, using gestures, 8-12 to 12 months, recognition of their name as early as 5 months, first word spoken, 10-15 to 15 months, vocabulary spurt, 18 months, rapid expansion of understanding words 18 to 24 months and two word utterances 18 to 24 months. Next is early childhood. Young children increase their grasp of languages rule systems. In terms of phonology, most young children become more sensitive to the sounds of spoken language. Children learn and apply rules of syntax and how words should be ordered. Vocabulary development increases dramatically during early childhood and their conversational skills improve. They increase their sensitivity to the needs of others in conversation and they learn to change their speech style to suit the situation. Next is middle childhood. Children gradually become more analytical and logical in their approach to words and grammar. They become increasingly able to use complex grammar and produce narratives that make sense. Improvements in metalinguistic awareness, knowledge about language, become evident as children start defining words, expand their knowledge of syntax and understand better how to use language in culturally appropriate ways. Next is adolescence. In adolescence, language changes include more effective use of words, improvements in the ability to understand metaphor, satire and adult literary works and improvements in writing. Young adolescents often speak a dialect with their peers using jargon and slang. Next is 2.1.1.4, page 67. Socio-emotional development. A child's socio-emotional development impacts the other domains of development. Physical, cognitive and language development is highly influenced by how children feel about themselves and how they are able to express their ideas and emotions. A. Emotional and Personality Development In fancy, emotions are the first language with which parents and infants communicate and emotions play a key role in parent-child relationships. Infants display a number of emotions early in their development. Crying is the most important mechanism newborns have for communicating with the people in their world. Early Childhood Advances in young children's emotional development involve expressing, understanding and regulating emotions. Young children's range of emotions expand during early childhood as they increasingly experience self-conscious emotions such as pride, shame and guilt. They also show a growing awareness of the need to manage emotions to meet social standards. Next is middle childhood. Self-understanding increasingly involves social and psychological characteristics, 
including social comparison. The development of self-regulation is an important aspect of this stage. Developmental changes in emotion include increased understanding of complex emotions such as pride and shame, improvements in the ability to suppress and conceal negative emotions, and the use of strategies to redirect feelings. Children use a greater variety of coping strategies. Next is adolescence. Identity development is complex and takes place in bits and pieces. Some researchers have found that self-esteem declines in early adolescence for both boys and girls, but the drop for girls is often greater, perhaps due to unfortunate and asymmetric societal expectations that need to be broken. Self-esteem reflects perceptions that do not always match reality. B. Role of families Infancy In infancy, contact, comfort and trust are important in the development of attachment. Infants show a strong interest in their social world and are motivated to understand it. Infants orient to the social world early in their development. Next is early childhood. Families play a significant role in the socio-emotional development of the child. The child takes emotional cues from the family and the socio-emotional state of family interactions. The sense of emotional security and comfort in interactions largely depends on the family environment. Next is middle childhood. Children begin to form strong bonds with peers while families continue to play a significant role in their emotional development. The socio-emotional state of peer groups and social groups also has a strong influence on the child's socio-emotional dispositions. Next is adolescence. There is a significant shift in the influence of peers. Identity formation, rebelling against authority, Conflict and aggression are sometimes markers of this age. Family's influence is often significantly lower on socio-emotional development. But the way conflicts are handled within the family has a significant impact. Next is page 68. C. Role of Peers Early Childhood Peers are powerful socialization agents. Peers provide a source of information and comparison about the world outside the family. In early childhood, children distinguish between friends and non-friends, with a friend often described as someone to play with. Rough and tumble play is more likely to occur in peer relations, whereas in times of stress, children often turn to parents rather than peers for support. Middle Childhood Children form stronger bonds with peers that go beyond play. Friendships are formed and friend groups become an important source for emotional development. Children continue to seek confirmation from adults at home and in school. Adolescence There is a significant shift in the influence of peers. Identity formation, rebelling against authority, conflict and aggression are sometimes markers. Fitting in and receiving confirmation from peer groups often becomes a priority at this age. 2.1.1.5 Moral Development Infancy The sense of right and wrong in infants depends on their feelings and desires. Their sense of rightness depends on whether their needs are met or not. Early Childhood Children think of justice and rules as unchangeable properties of the world and beyond the control of people. They judge the rightness of behaviour by considering the consequences and not the intentions of the individual. Middle Childhood Children begin to express objective ideas on fairness. They believe that equity can mean that people with disabilities or merit need special treatment. Adolescence 
closer to adulthood, children begin to develop their own moral values while questioning and analyzing the ones set by their parents or society. They value rules but also negotiate. As they develop abstract reasoning abilities, they display interest in the larger good for society. Next is 2.1.2 Panch Kosh Vikas Five-fold development, a keystone in Indian tradition. Next is figure 2.12 on page number 68. It shows Panch Kosh Vikas, which is described by five layers. The first is Anamay Kosh, second Pranamay Kosh, third Manomay Kosh, fourth Vigyan May Kosh, fifth Anand May Kosh. Now we move to page number 69. Panch Kosh Vikas, five-fold development, is a keystone in the Indian tradition of the imagination of the development of human beings. The child is a whole being with Panch Koshas or five sheets. The layers are Anamay Kosh, physical layer, Pranamay Kosh, life force energy layer, Manomay Kosh, mind layer, Vigyan May Kosh, intellectual layer and anandamaya kosh inner self each layer exhibits certain distinct characteristics the holistic development of a child takes into account the nurturing and nourishment of these five layers specific types of practices are designed to enable the development of each of these koshas However, the practices are designed keeping in mind that the koshas are interconnected and so activities that focus primarily on one word. However, the practices are designed keeping in mind that the koshas are interconnected and so activities that focus primarily on one would also contribute to the development of the others. For example, the physical dimensions are developed through a focus on a balanced diet, traditional games and adequate exercise as well as yoga asanas at the appropriate ages which build both gross and fine motor skills. Learning to breathe in a way that provides necessary oxygen for the entire body is important. It trains the voice and provides direction for increased self-awareness. A wide variety of stories, songs, lullabies, poems and prayers enable children to not only develop a love for their cultural context but also provide value-based insights. This contributes to language development beginning with listening or shravan as well as the ability to focus and concentrate. The senses, indriyas, are to be sharpened to be able to experience the world around in all its beauty and wonder. Seva, integrated into everyday life, enables the experience of joy of relationships along with being a part of and doing good for one's community. The Panch Kosha concept and imagination also maps into the different curricular areas as envisaged in the NCF. A. Physical Development, Sharirik Vikas and Development of Life Energy, Pranik Vikas. Age-specific balanced physical development, physical fitness, flexibility, strength and endurance. Development of senses, nutrition, hygiene, personal health, expansion of physical abilities, building body and habits keeping in mind 100 years of healthy living in a human being. Balance and retention of energy, positive energy and enthusiasm, smooth functioning of all major systems that is digestive, respiratory, circulatory and nervous systems by activation of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Physical education and well-being as a curricular area plays a vital role in this development. B. Emotional or mental development, Mansik Vikas, concentration, peace, will, and willpower, courage, handling negative emotions, developing virtues, Molya Vardhan, the will to attach and detach from work, 
people and situations happiness visual and performing arts culture and literature this aspect of socio emotional development needs to be addressed in almost all curricular areas particularly in art and vocational education c intellectual development baudhik vikas observation experimentation analytical ability abstract and divergent thinking synthesis logical reasoning linguistic skills imagination creativity power of discrimination generalization and abstraction the knowledge and capacities developed in all the curricular areas lead to intellectual development in breadth and depth d spiritual development chetsik vikas happiness love and compassion spontaneity freedom aesthetic sense the journey of turning the awareness in words a healthy body with appropriate emotional balance and knowledge in depth allows human beings to explore the wonders of this universe this exploration in its ultimate form done with appropriate humility and curiosity often reveals the true nature of the individual and the universe which indeed is a spiritual experience we move to page number 70 now panch kosha is an ancient explication of the importance of the body mind complex in human experience and understanding this non dichotomous approach to human development gives clear pathways and direction for meaningful education the ncf through the eight curricular areas outlined inspired by the concept of panch kosha aspires towards a more holistic education now we move to section 2.2 development of concepts in a curricular area and requirements of capacities child development describes the process of growth and mature child development describes the process of growth and maturation of maturation child development describes the process of growth and maturation of children in different domains and associated faculties which have a direct implication on what can be learned by children in each stage and how they can learn it thus informing the 5 3 3 4 structure the other matter that directly informs this curricular structure is the nature of the what its complexity its demands on faculties and its other characteristics the nature of knowledge and capacities to be learnt have implications on the sequence in which such learning and development of concepts and skills can occur this section explores some of these sequences and their implications for the four stages of schooling 2.2.1 reading development reading has become central to education and schooling most learning materials whether in the form of textbooks or worksheets have printed text in them and students are expected to read and comprehend them so it is important to consider the stages of reading development in the design of the school stages reading develops in the following stages chal js 1983 a stage 1 pre reading children develop oral language capacities and begin to recognize individual sounds in parts of speech exposure to rich language use specifically directed at children is critical for developing oral language and vocabulary that are necessary for initial reading exposure to the use of printed text by adults helps develop the concept of print b stage 2 initial reading Children start making connections between oral sounds and the visual symbolic form of the written system. This aspect of reading is termed as decoding, where the effort is focused on establishing letter sound relationships and using this understanding to read familiar and unfamiliar words. C, stage 3, fluency and ungluing from print. their decoding abilities become fluent and thus
placed low cognitive demand on the process of converting the textual symbols to sounds. With the release of this burden, their focus shifts to grasping the meaning in the text. D. Stage 4. Reading for learning the new. In this stage, children are not just reading familiar text and engaging with familiar ideas in a textual form. They are able to learn new ideas and concepts through the process of reading. They are not relying only on their concrete physical experience but are able to imagine possibilities based on what they read. Reaching this stage is especially important for students to become independent learners. Next is page 71. E. Stage 5. Multiple viewpoints. In this stage, a more critical understanding of the text being read becomes possible. The students can understand that the author of the text has a specific viewpoint and there are possible other viewpoints. They can bring in their own understanding and critically evaluate the piece of text. F. Stage 6. Construction and Reconstruction The reader forms a world view based on what they are reading. They consciously choose books to further deepen their worldview or challenge the worldview that they hold. They are able to identify the core thesis of the authors, identify their agreements and disagreements with that thesis and are able to synthesize and construct a new thesis through this process. In this approach to stages of reading, by the end of the preparatory stage, students should be reaching stage 3 and by end of the middle stage, they should be at stage 4. In the secondary stage, they should achieve stage 5 and begin stage 6. Next is 2.2.2 Perceptual, Practical and Theoretical Concepts Concept formation is at the core of the cognitive development of the child. A concept is a mental model that we make to understand the world. These models are created by a process of abstraction and categorization. Understanding different kinds of concepts is very relevant for curricular planning. Perceptual concepts are concepts formed through our perception or senses. Very young children can start differentiating objects based on their colour, shape, texture and perhaps even taste and smell. More complex concepts such as birds having feathers and dogs having legs and bark are perceptual concepts too. They are formed through careful observation and the use of the senses. Children almost automatically form these concepts through their experiences. By giving names to objects and experiences, language plays an important role in developing and expressing these concepts. Practical concepts are concepts formed not just by perception but the practical use that is embedded. For example, a table or a chair is not a mere perception of the colour or shape of the object but the practical use of the object. While the chair is an object on which people sit, a table is not usually used for sitting but to put objects on it or use for work. To form practical concepts, children need to have some understanding of social life. To understand a practical concept, one must grasp what people do with an object and what they use it for. Dearden, R.F. 1968 Again, through engagement and exposure to exercises in practical life, children develop practical concepts. Language development plays a very important role in the development of perceptual and practical concepts. Language enables us to check our experiences with others and ensure we have a shared meaning emerging from these experiences. This ensures that we grasp the socially accepted use of the practical concept or the socially accepted vocabulary that represents the perceptual concept. Theoretical concepts, on the other hand, explore in highly systematic ways our ordinary common sense experience. These concepts make sense only within a form of understanding. While a spherical or rectangular shape can be perceived, 
the mathematical understanding of a sphere or a rectangle has a very precise meaning. A rupee coin might perceptually mean a shiny round object. The practical use of it can also be grasped. But to understand money as an economic concept, children need an introduction to a whole lot of theories and conceptual structures in economics. Now we move to page number 72. While perceptual and practical concepts require not much more than a normal intuitive mind, theoretical concepts often are counterintuitive. To grasp that the Earth is rotating around the Sun at 30 kilometers per second and we are standing on a spinning orb rotating at a speed of 460 meters per second, we cannot rely on our concession. To grasp that the Earth is rotating around the Sun at 30 kilometers per second and we are standing on a spinning orb rotating at a speed of 460 meters per second, we cannot rely on our perceptions nor can ordinary practical experience be of any assistance. We need an understanding of physics and mathematics. There is often a discontinuity between our intuitions and ordinary practices and the nature of reality. Thus, theoretical concepts cannot be acquired merely through experiences or learning by doing. They need a more deliberate attempt of the teacher and the student to grasp the meaning behind the experience by connecting it to various conceptual structures and the methods of inquiry specific to a form of understanding. This indicates that very young children can grasp and develop perceptual and practical concepts through experience and human interaction along with effective use of language. Theoretical concepts, on the other hand, make sense only through the introduction of a form of understanding and perhaps can wait till the middle stage. In the secondary stage, students gain deeper disciplinary knowledge and methods. This enables them to grasp the deeper meanings of theoretical concepts by playing the concepts within the overall framework of the... This enables them to grasp the deeper meanings of theoretical concepts by placing the concepts within the overall framework of the disciplines, explaining them using the current valid theories of the discipline and also by linking these concepts to theoretical concepts in other disciplines. Next is 2.2.3 Modes of Inquiry the modes of inquiry used by children to develop conceptual understanding play a very important role in the selection of content, pedagogy and assessment. The progression of these modes of inquiry also has implications for the stages of schooling. Next, 2.2.3.1 Play and Exploration Young children learn various concepts, particularly perceptual and practical concepts, largely through play and open exploration. Their incredibly curious and absorbent minds are constantly exploring the natural and social world around them. They are intuitive problem solvers and grasp conventions of language use and social behaviour through observation and imitation. At this stage, a stimulating environment and the freedom to explore and play are the biggest and most effective sources of learning. The stimulation does not come only from the material environment but also from an attentive and active adult and peer group. Next is 2.2.3.2 .2. Capacities for Inquiry From a broad and free exploration, Children need to acquire more specific capacities that have an important role in further inquiry. In addition to the foundational capacities of literacy and numeracy, they acquire skills of observation, data collection, analysis and more. Gross motor and fine motor skills relevant to physical education, art education and vocational education are developed. Further, capacities for attention, perseverance and memory are also developed. These capacities are utilised in informal methods of inquiry to make sense of the world around them and to respond to the practical necessities of life. 
these capacities can be developed by giving learning experiences that are practical and within the social context of the student. The opportunities for learning can be guided explorations with a specific intent to develop these capacities. Now we move to page number 73, 2.2.3.3, Methods of Inquiry. To gain a deeper understanding, particularly of theoretical concepts, students need to gain knowledge and capacities for specific methods of inquiry. These methods are particular to different types of knowledge. Mathematics, science and social science have their own methods of inquiry and logic of reasoning. They have specific theories and a web of concepts, the understanding of which gives insight into a new way of thinking about the world. These methods, theories and concepts increase the depth of inquiry within a specific convention or tradition. Similarly, art has its specific forms and traditions in example visual art, music, dance and theatre. Understanding these forms and acquiring the relevant particles enables the students for a deeper exploration of aesthetic experiences. Specific forms of sports and practices such as yoga have their own methods. By getting introduced to these methods, students gain capacities for systematic and rigorous methods of inquiry in specific forms of understanding. Teaching in this stage is more formal and the emphasis is on understanding the conventions and the rules of the game, of each form of understanding and the necessary capacity to play within these rules. Next is 2.2.3.4 Disciplinary Exploration In this stage, students gain disciplinary depth within each type of knowledge. The mode of inquiry becomes exploratory again like in the first stage but within a framework of a discipline or a form. For example, a student with sufficient capacities or skills for dancing and a grounded knowledge of Bharatnatyam as a form of dance can now use these capacities and knowledge for creative expressions through dance. Similarly, after gaining sufficient capacities for scientific inquiry through experimentation and instrumentation in biology, students can pursue interesting and challenging questions about life forms and attempt to answer these questions within the discipline of biology. A more sophisticated form of exploration would be to utilize their knowledge in multiple disciplines and approach problems with interdisciplinary solutions. Now we move to page number 74, section 2.3, Stage Design. The curriculum for the four stages of schooling has been designed based on the vision of NEP and on the considerations of child development, conceptual nature, complexity, abstraction, of subjects and the appropriate modes of inquiry at each age range. Next is 2.3.1 Foundational Stage. The foundation stage is for children of ages between 3 and 8. Children start schooling in the foundational stage. The design is based on the principles of early childhood care and education ECCE, NEP 2020 states. ECCE ideally consists of flexible, multifaceted, multi-level, play-based, activity-based and inquiry-based learning comprising of alphabets, languages, numbers, counting, colours, shapes, indoor and outdoor play, puzzles and logical thinking, problem-solving, drawing, painting and other visual art, craft, drama and puppetry, music and movement. It also includes a focus on developing social capacities, sensitivity, good behaviour, courtesy, ethics, personal and public cleanliness, teamwork and cooperation. The overall aim of ECCE will be to attain optimal outcomes in the domains of physical and motor development, cognitive development, socio-emotional ethical development, cultural or artistic development and the development of communication and early language, literacy and numeracy. NEP 2020 1.2 A. Curricular Structure 
The foundational stage curriculum of the NCF is divided into domains that are closely linked to the developmental domains of the child. Physical development, socio-emotional ethical development, cognitive development, language and literacy development, and aesthetic and cultural development. The mother tongue is emphasized for language and literacy development and to ease and make more effective learning in other domains as well. The five domains of development are also informed by the Panchkosh imagination. B. Content Textbooks are used only from grade 1 and most of the content consists of concrete materials, toys, puzzles and manipulatives. Along with these materials, learning experiences organized through physical exploration of the classroom and outdoor space becomes the most appropriate content. In later years of this stage, worksheets can start playing a bigger role. Children's literature is a very important source of content for language and literacy development. C. Pedagogy The pedagogical approach suggested is play-based and emphasizes the nurturing, caring relationships between the teacher and the children. The pedagogical design should allow for a balance between self-paced individual learning to a more social group-based learning. Development of foundational capacities in literacy and numeracy would require systematic guidance from the teacher as well as adequate time for the child to practice and repeat on their own. Whole class instruction should be balanced with time for children to work on their own either with materials or with worksheets. Next we move to page number 75. D. Assessments most assessments are observations made by teachers and not explicit testing of abilities of students. Worksheets used by children can give information to teachers about progress in learning. E. Classroom arrangement. Children of this age group need to move freely and have adequate opportunities for engaging their natural curiosity and exploration. Classroom arrangements should reflect this need of the children and should not restrict their movement. Example, through the placement of play, activity, learning corners that keep the centre of the room free and open. F. Teachers Since the relationship between children and the teacher is critical for this stage, the same teacher would engage in all the domains and there would not be any subject or domain-specific teacher. The pupil-teacher ratio, that is the PTR, is also expected to be lower since individual attention and assessment through observation are necessary. The foundational stage bridges the divide between the home environment of the child and the formal school environment. It develops capacities in foundational literacy and numeracy that enable the student to learn all other subject areas. In addition to these capacities, it develops valuable dispositions for active learning and enables students to become engaged learners in formal school environments. Play and exploration are the natural modes through which children learn and the foundational stage utilizes these modes to promote valuable capacities and dispositions. Next is 2.3.2 .2, Preparatory Stage. The duration of the preparatory stage is three years and includes grades 3, 4 and 5. The preparatory stage will comprise three years of education, building on the play, discovery and activity-based pedagogical and curricular style of the foundational stage, but also gradually beginning to incorporate textbooks as well as aspects of more formal classroom learning. There would mostly be generalist teachers during this stage, with the possible exception of some specialist language and art teachers who may be shared across the school or school complex. The aim of this stage will be to lay the general groundwork across subjects including reading, writing, speaking, physical education, art, languages, science and mathematics so that students are prepared to delve deeper into learning areas through specialized subjects and subject teachers in the stages that follow. KRCR 2019 4.1.1
Next is A. Curricular Structure The preparatory stage curriculum of the NCF is divided into the following curricular areas. At least two languages, mathematics, art education, physical education and well-being and the world around us. The world around us is an interdisciplinary area that encourages exploration and understanding of both the natural world and the social world. Aspects of work in vocational education are also incorporated into this curricular area. The preparation is largely focused on capacities and dispositions at this stage. B. Content Textbooks start playing a bigger role in the areas of language and mathematics. A variety of children's literature should complement the language textbook to consolidate students' literacy capacities. Materials and manipulatives continue to play a role in mathematics through emphasis shifts to symbolic though emphasis shifts to symbolic representation in correspondence with concrete materials. The world around us should rely less on the textbook and more on experiential learning with physical exploration as the main source of content. The content needs to be within the familiar context of the student. Next, we move to page number 76. C. Pedagogy Activity and discovery-based pedagogy continues in this stage, gradually encouraging students to be active within a formal classroom arrangement. The ability to concentrate and pay continuous attention to classroom lectures and discussions needs to be encouraged. Some proportion of the self-paced individual work should be part of the classroom activity while some amount of homework can be included. D. Assessments Assessments in this stage are a combination of observation of students' activity, correcting their worksheets and short formal written evaluations. Periodic summative assessments should supplement the more frequent formative assessments. E. Classroom Arrangement The classroom setting is a balance between a formal environment and an arrangement that encourages movement and exploration. Students sitting and working in groups should be encouraged. F. Teachers Teachers continue to be generalist and teach across curricular areas. For art and physical education and well-being, specialists from the school complexes can be invited for the development of specific capacities and skills. But the class teacher should continue to be present and mediate these interactions with the students. The preparatory stage consolidates the capacities and dispositions that begin to develop in the foundational stage. Students are expected to develop fluency in literacy and numeracy and develop further capacities that are helpful in a systematic exploration of the natural and social worlds around them. Next is 2.3.3 Middle Stage The duration of the middle stage is also three years and includes grades 6, 7 and 8. The middle stage will comprise three years of education, building on the pedagogical and curricular style of the preparatory stage. But with the introduction of subject teachers for learning and discussion of the more abstract concepts in each subject that students will be ready for at this stage across the sciences, mathematics, arts, social sciences and humanities. Experiential learning within each subject and explorations of relations among different subjects will be encouraged and emphasized despite the introduction of more specialized subjects and subject teachers. NEP 2020 4.2 Next is A. Curricular Structure The middle stage expands the curricular areas to include science, that is, the study of the physical and natural world, and social science, that is, the study of the human world. And students also get exposure to vocational education. Based on the capacities and dispositions in the preparatory stage, students engage more formally with knowledge and values in the middle stage. Curricular areas are dealt with as forms of understanding with explicit engagement with paradigmatic theories and conceptual structures that frame each area. 
the more generic capacities such as observation and data collection developed in the preparatory stage are now specialized into specific methods of inquiry that are appropriate for each form of understanding. For example, students gain an understanding of the methods of inquiry in science and also contrast them with the methods of inquiry in history or in the arts. The conventions and protocols of each form of understanding are also introduced in the middle stage. We are now on page number 77. B. Content The content in the middle stage needs to reflect the engagement with theoretical concepts and the introduction of theories and conceptual frameworks specific to each form of understanding. There is a shift to more abstract ideas and the students are expected to engage with unfamiliar contexts and situations. The textbooks begin to play a central role in mediating the content in the middle stage. Both the expansion of curricular areas and the engagement with abstract ideas and unfamiliar context could be challenging for students. Well-designed textbooks with clear expectations and specific learning goals would support students in entering these forms of understanding in a structured and systematic manner. C. Pedagogy Pedagogy is a judicious balance of direct instruction and opportunities for exploration and inquiry. As mentioned before, the expansion of content areas and the abstract nature of theories place a heavier cognitive demand on students. The focus on concept development indicates that the teacher must pay attention to the prior concepts that students might already have and how to use those concepts to bring about active learning. The emphasis is not on accumulating facts but on becoming fluent in the methods of inquiry within each form of understanding. D. Assessments Assessments can become more formal and explicit. The focus of assessments should be on the specific ways of reasoning within each form of understanding and not primarily on the recall of facts. Formal tests and examinations play a role with the expectation that students can process larger chunks of information together for analysis and synthesis. Periodic summative assessments should again supplement the more frequent formative assessments. E. Classroom arrangement The classroom is increasingly a formal space allowing for group work and peer interactions. Subject-specific classrooms become effective when equipped with appropriate TLMs and other resources. F. Teachers Subject-specific teachers handle different curricular areas in this stage. Teachers need a profound understanding of the curricular area in terms of vertical connections of concepts within the subject and horizontal connections with concepts in other areas. Students of this age benefit from engaging with a diverse set of adults who have their own personalities and interests. Art education, physical education and well-being and vocational education can have visiting faculty who have specialised knowledge and skills. The middle stage utilises the capacities and dispositions developed during the preparatory stage and introduces the students to different forms of understanding. Students gain systematic knowledge through rational thought and inquiry. The capacities for critical thinking and problem solving are consolidated in this stage and they acquire the desirable values and dispositions for democratic or economic or cultural participation. Moving on to page number 78, 2.3.4 Secondary Stage, 2.3.4.1 NEP 2020 Considerations A. No Hard Separation NEP 2020 gives clear mandate to move away from the current practice of streaming into science, arts or humanities and commerce. Instead, students can choose subjects across curricular areas. Thus, the secondary stage design should enable both breadth through engagement with a variety of subjects across streams. 
including art education, physical education and well-being and vocational education, as well as depth in areas chosen by students. B. Breadth and Depth Students should have breadth and depth across multiple disciplines and depth in chosen subjects. C. Choice and Flexibility Students should have flexibility and choice across subjects and curricular areas. D. Reduced Content Load Curriculum content will be reduced in each subject to its core essentials to make space for critical thinking and more holistic, inquiry-based, discovery-based, discussion-based and analysis-based learning. NEP 2020 4.5 E. Reduced Exam Pressures Board exams will also be made easier in the sense that they will test primarily core capacities or competencies rather than months of coaching and memorization. NEP 2020 4.37 Next is 2.3.4.2 Curricular Structure A. To enable the vision of NEP 2020, the secondary stage will be designed in two phases, grades 9 and 10 and grades 11 and 12. In grades 9 and 10, students engage with a breadth of curriculum across curricular areas. In grades 11 and 12, more specializations and choices are available to students while still maintaining significant breadth. B. Grades 9 and 10 will ensure breadth, building on the learning achieved in the middle stage with clear continuity between the two stages. 1. Study three languages, R1, R2, R3, at least two of which are native to India. Study seven subjects, mathematics and computational thinking, social science, science, art education, physical education and well-being, vocational education and interdisciplinary areas. Each of these subjects will be well-integrated and coherent study of multiple disciplines. For example, in science, biology, chemistry, physics and earth science. Again, the emphasis would be on learning core concepts or competencies rather than the memorization of facts. See figure 2.31. 2. Learning standards for these subjects are articulated in the corresponding curricular areas for this phase in this NCF and it is expected that all students attain these learning standards. See Part C, Chapters 2 to 9. 3. All secondary schools will need to offer three languages as well as all the seven subjects so that all students are able to complete Grade 10. Out of these, Art, Physical Education and Wellbeing and Vocational Education would be examined locally. See Figure 2.3.4.7 on Assessment. Next, we move to page number 79. Now we move to figure 2.31, 10th board certification. In this we have curricular areas, subjects and examinations. In languages we have language 1, external examination, language 2, external examination, language 3, external examination. In mathematics and computational thinking we have mathematics, external examination. In science, we have science and external examination. In social science, we have social science and external examination. In art education, we have art education, which is local assessment with external examiner. In interdisciplinary areas, we have environmental education, which is external examination. In physical education and well-being, we have physical education, which is local assessment with external examiner and vocational education which is vocational education with local assessment with external examiner. Next is page 80. C. Grades 11 and 12 will enable depth of study based on choices that students make. 1. To ensure that students have a depth of learning across a range of human knowledge, students will have to 1. Choose two languages from group 1 at least one of which is native to India. 2. Choose four subjects with an optional fifth subject from at least two of the following groups. Group 2, that is art education, physical education and well-being, vocational education. Group 3, that is social science and humanities, 
interdisciplinary areas and group 4 that is science mathematics and computational thinking figure 2.32 moving on these groups have been created to address the requirement of breadth of study in NEP 2020 which is why there is a requirement to choose subjects from at least two groups in the longer term, as schools develop the requisite capacity, it will be desirable for students to have to take subjects from all three groups above to develop well-rounded thinking. For more details on groups, curricular areas and subjects, see figure 2.32. The following are some of the key considerations for designing the subject courses in grades 11 and 12. 1. In the case of subjects based on academic disciplines, the intent would be to give adequate exposure to the key conceptual structures and theories of the discipline and develop capacities of inquiry in that discipline. The students would develop an understanding of how this discipline behind the subject fits within the curricular area and the open questions that the discipline is currently engaging with. This would enable students to make informed decisions about the pursuit of this discipline in higher education or to study it on their own. 2. In case of interdisciplinary areas, a very wide range of subjects can be offered. Art education can offer specific form of art as subjects, while physical education and well-being can offer specializations based on practices such as yoga. In the case of vocational areas, the subject should equip students to enter the world of work in a particular vocation. Contemporary subjects such as artificial intelligence, design thinking, holistic health, organic living and global citizenship education as recommended by NEP 2020 can be offered as courses in appropriate groups. An illustrative list of subjects is given in figure 2.32. 3. This NCF states the broad aims for the curricular areas and does not specify the learning standards for grades 11 and 12 that must be achieved in each subject. These have to be articulated specifically in terms of competencies and learning outcomes for each subject by syllabus developers. However, this NCF has specific illustrations of a few disciplines. See Part C, Chapter 10. 4. Since students would have a wide choice, Syllabus or course designers of subjects should not assume that students would choose a complementing subject. For example, the biology courses in grade 11 and 12 cannot be designed on the assumption that students are enrolled in chemistry in their grade 11th and 12th. Next, we move to page number 81, figure 2.32. In this figure, we have four groups. Group 1 is on languages. They are languages native to India, compulsory, other languages, compulsory, modern Indian languages, classical languages and foreign languages. Group 2 is divided into three. Art education, physical education and well-being, vocational education. In art education, we have Indian classical music, folk music, contemporary music, theatre, puppetry, sculpture, fine arts, folk painting, graphic design, motion pictures, photography, textile designing. In physical education and well-being, we have yoga and lifestyle, sports and nutrition, physical education for students with disabilities, biomechanics and sports. In vocational education, we have agriculture, that is cereal production, agriculture, seed production, agriculture, gardening, automobile servicing, machining, electronics, community health, accounting services, data entry and management, banking services, retail services, textile and garments. In group 3, we have social sciences and interdisciplinary areas. In social sciences, we have history, geography, political science, psychology, psychology and mental health, economics, development economics, sociology, 
philosophy, anthropology and archaeology. In interdisciplinary areas, we have business studies, accounting, sustainability and climate change, journalism, Indian knowledge systems and legal studies. In Group 4, we have Mathematics and Computational Thinking and Science. In Mathematics and Computational Thinking, we have Mathematics, Computer Science, Business Mathematics, Advanced Mathematics, Probability and Statistics. In Science, we have Physics, Chemistry, Biology, Earth Sciences, Astronomy, Modern Physics and Biology. Next, we move to page number 82. 5. Subjects can be offered at different levels. For example, there can be a basic mathematics subject as well as advanced mathematics. Students will be given the choice of opting for different levels. 2. Students are expected to make their choices on the basis of their passions and interest and their future plans either in the world of work or in higher education after their school completion. See figure 2.34 for some illustrative combinations that students may choose. Next, we move to 2.3.4.3, Implications for Schools and Boards of Examination. A. For Phase 1, Grades 9 and 10. 1. Schools should offer all the 10 subjects required for 10th grade certification. See figure 2.31. B. For Phase 2, Grades 11 and 12. 1. Schools should offer a minimum of two languages. 2. Schools should, at a minimum, offer subjects from at least two groups amongst groups 2, 3 and 4. 3. In five years, schools should offer subjects from all four groups. 4. Within 10 years, many more subjects should be offered within groups to give more choice and flexibility to students and all curricular areas should be covered. C. Board of Examination 1. Boards of Examination should offer all subjects for Grade 10. 2. For Grade 12, boards should not restrict students to two subjects within streams such as science or commerce and instead allow flexibility to choose from different groups. 3. A wide range of examinations for different subjects within groups should be designed to increase choice and flexibility for students and schools. 4. Subject examinations at different levels, example basic and advanced, should be offered. 5. Processes for impaneling external examiners for art education, physical education and well-being and vocational education should be defined. 6. Board examinations should be made easier in the sense that they test primarily core capacities or competencies rather than months of coaching and memorization. Next, we move to 2.3.4.4 Implementation in Phases. The NCF 2023 aims to respond meaningfully to the recommendations of NEP 2020 in giving more flexibility and choice to students and not creating hard separations between disciplines. Along with these responses, the curricular areas of art education, physical education and well-being, vocational education and interdisciplinary areas have received additional attention. In order to fully realise the vision of NEP 2020 in a practical manner, the NCF 2023 recommends a phased approach towards implementing the curriculum. Next, we move to page number 83, figure 2.33. It shows the 12th board certification. The compulsory subjects are subject 1 and subject 2, at least one of these two languages native to India. In group 1, languages ranging from basic proficiency to literary level. This is for external examination. In subject 3, 4, subject 5 and subject 6 and subject 7, which is optional, we have at least 4 subjects from at least 2 of these groups. Group 2, group 3, group 4. In group 2, we have art education, that is music, dance, theatre, sculpture, painting. Physical education and well-being, specific sports or games or yoga. And vocational education, which is aligned to NSQF, 
This is for local assessment with external examiner. In group 3, we have social science, that is history, geography, political science, economics, philosophy, psychology and sociology. These are interdisciplinary areas of commerce, environmental education. This is for external examination. Next is group 4, which is for mathematics and computational thinking, that is mathematics, programming and coding and business mathematics. Also for science, physics, chemistry, biology. This is also for external examination. In figure 2.34, we have combinations for commerce, combinations for science, combinations for social science and multidisciplinary combinations. In combination 1, that is combinations for commerce, we have Hindi, English, Business Studies, Accounting, Economics from Group 3, Business Mathematics from Group 4. In combination 2, under combinations for commerce, we have Bengali, English, Business Studies, Accounting from Group 3, Business Mathematics from Group 4, Fine Arts from Group 2. Under combinations for science, combination 1 is Classical Telugu, Sanskrit, Mathematics, Physics Chemistry from Group 4, Sustainability and Climate Change from Group 3. In combination 2, we have Gujarati, English, Biology, Physics, Chemistry from Group 4, Indian Classical Music from Group 2, Optional Mathematics from Group 4. Under Combinations for Social Science, in Combination 1, we have Marathi, French, History, Economics, Psychology from Group 3, Contemporary Music from Group 2. In Combination 2, we have Assamese, Sanskrit, Geography, Political Science from Group 3, Indian Classical Music from Group 2, Optional Mathematics from Group 4. In Multidisciplinary Combinations, in combination 1, we have classical Tamil, Hindi, gardening from group 2, history, journalism from group 3, mathematics from group 4. In combination 2, we have Pali, Malayalam, folk music from group 2, automobile servicing from group 2, business studies from group 3, optional business mathematics from group 4. Next, we move to page number 84. A. Schools and examination boards should be prepared to offer and assess all the 10 curricular areas for grade 10 right from the beginning of the implementation of this NCF. B. Schools and examination boards should be prepared to offer a minimum of two languages for grade 12 from the beginning of the implementation of this NCF. C. Schools should be prepared to offer subjects from at least two groups amongst groups 2, 3 and 4 immediately. Within five years, schools should be ready to offer subjects from all the four groups. Within 10 years, schools should offer many more subjects covering all curricular areas. D. The secondary stage has been divided into two phases, grades 9 and 10 and grades 11 and 12. In 10 years, all school systems should move to a single unified stage for secondary, where students have choice and flexibility with breadth right from grade 9 through 12th, thus realizing the NEP vision of the secondary stage as being four years of multidisciplinary study. E. The current system of study in annual patterns should move to a semester design. This would allow for greater flexibility in design of courses. F. In 10 years, boards of examination should be prepared to offer certification through easier modular examinations. That each test far less material and are taken immediately after the course is taken in school. NEP 2020 4.38 in order to eliminate the need for studying large amounts of material at once and to thereby further reduce coaching culture and the need for coaching. Next is 2.3.4.5 Content For grades 9 and 10, textbooks can continue to be an important source of content. For grades 11 and 12, each semester-long course can have its own specific course compendium. At this stage, a variety of content addressing specific concepts and methods of inquiry should be made available. 
to teachers and the teachers should choose appropriate content packages to meet the learning objectives of the courses. Next is 2.3.4.6 Pedagogy. Pedagogy at this stage should take into consideration the knowledge and capacities that students will bring from the previous stages of schooling. The pedagogy should encourage more self-study and exploration with a focus on becoming fluent in the methods of inquiry specific to the curricular area. At this stage, students can be reasonably expected to become independent learners and the pedagogy in the classroom should reflect this expectation. Classroom interactions should be a judicious mix of more direct instruction from the teacher with discussion, seminars for discussion, exploration and discovery and opportunities for students to prepare individual and group projects and present key concepts of the discipline. Next is 2.3.4.7 Assessment A. Grades 9 and 10 1. Students must successfully pass board examinations at the end of grade 10. These examinations are conducted by the respective boards of examinations with central evaluation. These examinations should assess the competencies defined in the learning standards for each curricular area. 1. The languages curricular area would have three examinations for R1, R2 and R3. 2. The curricular areas of mathematics and computational thinking Science, social science and interdisciplinary areas would have one examination each adding to four examinations. We are now on page 85. 2. Assessment schemes, question papers for art, physical education and well-being and vocational education can be prepared by the appropriate board of examinations and both the assessment and evaluation can be done locally at the school level with external examiners. 3. Boards must offer these examinations multiple times, each being a cycle in the same academic year and students' final certification must be on the basis of the best performance across these cycles, including taking the best performance from different curricular areas from different cycles within three academic years. B. Grades 11 and 12 1. To complete grade 12, students should pass the following board examinations. 1. Two examinations in languages, at least one of which is native to India. These languages may or may not be continuations of R1, R2 or R3. For example, there may be a specialized literature class in R1, R2 or R3 or a new Indian language such as Sanskrit or classical Tamil and or a foreign language. 2. Four examinations from at least two groups plus an optional fifth exam. Group 2. Art Education, Physical Education and Wellbeing, Vocational Education. Group 3. Social Science, Interdisciplinary Areas. And Group 4. Science, Mathematics and Computational Thinking. 2. The mode of conducting examinations should be liberalized in due course from the rigid annual examinations. Modular examinations can be offered by boards as opposed to a single examination at the end of the year. These can be offered at different times of the year. In due course, boards of examinations should develop capacities to offer on-demand examinations. The final certification will be based on the cumulative result of each of the examinations. 3. Assessment Schemes Question papers for art education, physical education and well-being and vocational education can be prepared by the appropriate board of examinations and both the assessment and evaluation can be done locally at the school level with external examiners. The matter of assessment and examinations are dealt with in greater detail in Part A, Chapter 3 in Figure number 3.4, which are equally relevant to the secondary stage. Next is 2.3.4.8, Classroom Arrangement. 
The classroom arrangement should take into consideration that students are expected to be more independent learners. The physical arrangement should facilitate group discussions and explorations. Laboratory spaces can be utilized for science classrooms with adequate safety precautions instead of separating the sites of learning theory and practice. Dedicated classrooms for specific subjects are very effective at this stage whether the classrooms are equipped with the necessary TLMs. Next we move to page number 86. 2.3.4.9 Teachers Teachers at this stage must be subject specialists with deep understanding and interest in the discipline. Art education and physical education and well-being would need specialists who are able to teach theory and practice both. You were just listening to the National Curriculum Framework 2023. This is brought to